How we do it you come in and, and go ahead and share let me just get myself together so i will be able to see your comments because sometimes i'm not always able to see your comments hi miss leslie hi darla i love your name that is such a pretty name darla um hello everybody come on in come on in good morning good morning good morning Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, come on in. Good morning. I just love that. I can hear that in your voice, uh, Tawana, when you say sweetie. <laughs> Good morning to you. Um, it is always an honor and a pr privilege to be able to pray for God's people. Um, I am just feeling, I don't know, I'm feeling really just I'm in this place where I'm feeling really excited about who God is, what he's doing, and just the creativity of God. Um, and so I am just really excited to be praying with you, praying for his people. Um, and so today, maybe maybe this is why I'm so excited, I'm, because today's focus is success on our mission. You know, we God has a plan for us. He has a mission for each one of us, and it's uniquely fit for you. Um, it's uniquely fit for me. And we walk that out. Blessings, everyone. Good morning. You guys are coming on in. Good morning. I just appreciate. Let me say this before I get started. I don't take it um, lightly that you decided to spend this this time of prayer with me. And um, I don't take it lightly. I feel honored that you decided to come visit with me for a while as we pray together. Um, and as we just trust uh, who Je uh, who God is in our lives. And so we're just excited about that. For some that may may not know me or haven't stopped by and visited before or may watch the replay, I'm Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Worship Center here in Chicago. And I've been doing Mountain Movers Prayer now on Facebook. This is my second year of doing it. Um, but for the last two months, I've been really focusing a lot on praying and um, because that's what we need in this season. And so what I've been doing this month is the Lord gives me some scripture and I've just been praying through that scripture. And however the Lord leads, that's how he leads. And and then towards the end, I ask you for your needs, your prayer requests. And then we just let the Holy Ghost just have his way. Amen. Is that all right? Hey there, Miss Leslie. Mwah, 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 to all of you. So the first scripture the Lord gave me is Genesis 24, 42. And please share why you're in because somebody else may need the blessing as well. And so I appreciate that. So Genesis 24, 42, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This is what it says. So today, when I came to the spring, I prayed this prayer, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, please give me success on this mission. Now, let me put that in context and, and, and where it was come. If you look at the scripture in, in Genesis 24, looking at 12 to 14, I'm going to just read that little piece so we can get the fullness of why this is an important scripture that I believe God wants me to pray and start off this morning. Verse 12 says, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, he prayed, please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. See, I am standing here beside this spring and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. 
This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says, yes, have a drink and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. This is how I will know that you have shown unfailing love to my master. And this is why I think this scripture is key this morning as I began to pray. This was Abraham sending his servant to go find a wife for his son. So there was a mission. There was a purpose that he was sending his servant on. And don't you know, you and I, God has a purpose. He's sending us on some missions for him. He's sending us out to do some things and they have some specific outcomes that he wants to accomplish because of what he's doing in us. And so this servant says, I know what my mission is. I'm supposed to bring back a wife. I'm supposed to bring back a covenant somebody to come into covenant with uh, Abraham's son. And so I need to make sure that I'm just not bringing back anything. Come on, somebody that I'm bringing back the right one. I'm bringing back the one God wants to be in this relationship. And so he asked, he said, this is my request. Lord, here's my request. I'm going I'm to pray such a way, Lord, you make it real simple and plain. That's really what he was saying. Make it plain, make it simple so that I can't mess it up. And you know what? It is okay for us to say, Lord, I'm going to pray and I want to pray a prayer that's going to make it real plain and simple so that I don't mess up the mission, that I don't mess up what it is that you have for me. Amen. And so, Father, we come and start off our prayer just like this. Father, today, as we come by the spring, springs just remind me of water and refresher. As we come stand by you, because you're the spring, you're the water. We come and stand by you today and say, Father, our prayer is, Lord, we need you to help us to be successful on the mission that you have for our life. Whatever it is that you have called for us to do today, we want to make sure that we do it according to your will, according to your plan, and according to your strategy. So we're going to come and ask you first, Lord, we want to have success today. And we're standing here here, and we're going to ask you a, a simple request. Lord, make it plain for us. Make it simple for us. Let us know so that we don't pull into the wrong thing, that we don't partner with the wrong thing, because in this request, it is a request for covenant. Father, we want to make sure that our mission is right because we're in right covenant. Come on, come on. Lord, help us to be in right covenant. We want to make sure that we're partnering with who you want us to partner with, whether that's in marriage, whether that's in ministry, whether that's in business. We want to partner the way you have de de declared over our lives so that we're in the right relationship. We're in the right partnerships so that we can see what you have desired to come forth from us. So Father, we thank you you right now and we're asking you to help us lord yes we need a refreshing because father part of why we need to come by the springs by the water is there's a refreshing there we're asking for a refreshing in our mind refreshing in our thinking we're asking for a refreshing today lord so that we're able to see and understand and to do everything that you have called for us to do we don't want to make the wrong choices we don't want to make the wrong partnerships we want to make an assurance that the covenants we are creating are the covenants that the father wanted. We want to make sure that we're covenanting and partnering with people in business today. So father, I pray for those who have business, business ideas, business strategies, business plans. I pray right now, Lord God, that you will make it plain and very simple for them to see who they need to partner with. Who is that partner that they need to, that, that's going to build with them, that's going to not only have, because I love this about this scripture. It, when, when, when he said, Lord, my request is when I ask her for drink, she going to also think about my camels too. What that signifies to me by way of the spirit is God wants to partner you with people that will, will, will see what you you ask, but also realize more of what you need. So Father, partner us with people that not only see the right now, but that are able to see into the future, that are able to see that there's even a greater need than maybe even what I just asked for. So Father, we thank you right now that we're going to see these right kind of connections, these right kind of partnerships, that they will be able to see more of what we need. They will be able to see even further than maybe what we ask. So we thank you, Lord God, that in this season, that is the partnerships that you're going to get 
give us so we can see success in the mission. We can see success as we move forward. We can see the success for the journey that is ahead of us. We thank you for the creative ideas. We thank you for the financial um, ability. We thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do because we're going to say today, even in advance, Lord, thank you because we are going to have success in our missions. There is going to be success in our journey. I declare that right now in the name of Jesus. There's success in our journey. There's success in our journey. Our missions will find success. Nothing will come and hinder the success that God has for your life. Amen. First Samuel 12, 23 says, as for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you. And I will continue to teach you what is good and right. Now, putting that into the to the context of the full of the scripture, you see in verses 20 through 25, it says, don't be afraid. Samuel reassured them. This is when the people wanted a king. He said, you have certainly done wrong. He acknowledged that. But make sure now, make sure now, make sure now that you worship the Lord with all your heart and don't turn your back on him. Don't go back to worshiping worthless idols that cannot help or rescue you. They are totally useless. The Lord will not abandon his people because that was just that would dishonor his great name. Do you know God is come on somebody. You know God actually a lot of times he we we are standing on God taking care of us not cuz we so great. It's because he said a thing and he's not going to dishonor himself. Thank you Jesus. The scriptures went on to say please because that would dishonor his great name. For it has pleased the Lord to make you his very own people. As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayer for you. And I will continue to teach you what is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve him. Think of all the wonderful things he has done for you. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be swept away. Why did I read that? See, Samuel made it up in his mind that to pray for the people and to teach them what was right was it was not only a mandate for mission, but he said, I'm not going to sin against God by not doing it. I'm going to do it because that is part of how we're going to fulfill mission. That is how you and I are going to be able to overcome some things in our lives. He told the people, yep, y'all did wrong when you wanted a king because you were going contrary to what God wanted. He said, but even in that, God is saying repent get back up keep moving forward why because he said just don't go back to some old things i want to encourage somebody today because the enemy constantly tells you you've messed up too bad so your mission has been aborted and i want to tell somebody today that your mission has not been aborted if god said a thing about you don't you know god will fulfill it he said why he said because that's not he's not going to dishonor his name he the one that declared this over you he is the one that spoke this over you why because he wanted you to be his people. He said, for it pleased the Lord to make you his very own people. It don't have to make sense to us why God chose us. It don't even have to make sense why God wants to use you. It probably won't make sense when you start to count off, well, I can't do this. I can't do that. I don't have this skill. I, you know, when you start listing all of what you can't do, then you will disqualify yourself. But God didn't say I called you for what you could do. He said, I called you because I loved you and I'm going to do it through you because of who I am. So don't go back to worshiping worthless idols that can't help you or rescue you. They are totally useless. That's what the scripture said. And so I just want to encourage somebody today to know your mission has not been aborted. Yes, you might have messed up. You might have let fear get in the way. You might have let rejection get in the way. You might have let doubt get in the way. But I want to encourage somebody today just get up. Just get up and keep praying. Just get up and keep moving. Why? Because there's somebody praying for you. See, Samuel said he was praying for the people. Good morning, Pamela. He said he was praying for the people. He said, I will not sin against God by not praying against praying for the people. So you know what? It's somebody that might see you messing up, 
Somebody might see you totally jacked up, but guess what? They ain't talking about you. They praying for you. Everybody ain't your hater. Everybody is not looking for you to fail. There's some people on their face for you. There's some people praying and interceding for you. Oh, I can feel my strength right there. It's some people saying, no, no, no. I know you got a plan for them. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to partner with the plan of God over your life, and I'm going to begin to pray for you. I'm going to partner with the plan of God for you, and I'm going to intercede. I might never tell you. You might never know. No, but I might be on my face praying for you, interceding for you. I don't know if you hear it like any of you to join me for my when I do my, my, my things for my business. I say this at the end of every one of my lives. I say I'm praying for you. And I'm not saying that just to sound good. I honestly pray. I'm like, Lord, I will wake up in the morning sometime and flip and scroll through Facebook and a name will pop up and I read somebody's status and the Lord say pray for it. And I begin to pray and I begin to intercede. And I don't just pray, Lord, let them have a good day. I say, Lord, what is it they need prayer about? Give me access. Oh, Rabasa. Give me access to their need what is it that they need so i can pray according to your spirit i can i can pray according to what they need and that my prayer ain't just coming out of my mouth and hitting the ground but it is reaching heaven why because you want them prayed for so i want to encourage somebody today know that the lord has got people interceding for you father we come right now and father as your people we say like samuel as for me i will certainly not sin against the lord by any of my prayers for your people and I will continue to teach them what is good and what is right. I will continue to intercede for them. Father, we will continue to intercede not only for our family, we'll continue to intercede for our leaders, we'll continue to intercede for the world, we'll continue to pray, Lord, for those that stand in need of you. We will continue to pray because Father, we believe right now in the name of Jesus that you are a promise keeper and you're going to honor your name by making your people be who they need to be. And so, Father, we thank you today that we stand on this promise that if you declare the thing, you have not taken it back. So, Father, right now, there are many who have forgotten the promises that you have given them. There are many who have forgotten about who you've called them to be. But today, Lord God, we come to remind you and remind them, not you, because you haven't forgotten, to remind them that you are a promise keeper. Father, I thank you right now. Lord, I pray for Chuck. I saw Chuck jumped on here. And Father, I just pray right now there's some great needs for Chuck and his wife. And so, Father, I pray right now that you would intercede on their behalf. We consider it an honor and a privilege to hold your people up in prayer. Father, you are still a healer. I know we can get reports from doctors to say something contrary. But, Father, we're still trusting in you. We're still trusting your hand. We're still trusting that you are a healer, a deliverer and a promise keeper. So Father, I ask right now that you give them the strength they need for this journey. I pray, Lord God, that you would bring about some things up out of their life that'll be such a great testimony that only you, they would only know that it's been you. So Father, we come and, and partner together and say, Lord, have your way in your people. We say, Father, thank you right now. We give you the praise for knowing you to be who you are. So Father, we say thank you. Father, we thank you for being a healer. Father, we come and partner for those that stand in need of healing. There are those fa uh, facing cancer, those with diabetes, those that are even dealing with the COVID-19 um, uh, virus. There are many that are dealing with other kinds of ailments in their bodies, and we're coming and we're petitioning you today on their behalf. Father, we're petitioning them. We're asking you that you would be the healing virtues would pour out on this broadcast. We ask you, Lord God, that you would touch every life, every person represented that need healing. If somebody need healing, just write it in the comment. I need healing. And Father, we thank you right now because you know every Every name, you know every person, and we believe by faith that you are a healer. I come today boldly believing that somebody is going to be healed. I come boldly today believing. Why? Because you said it. You said that we can come and ask for a thing and that you wouldn't turn us away, that you would pour out on us. And I'm believing today that healing is ours. I'm believing today, Lord God, that you're shifting some things. Father, let the heat, let the glory begin to overcome, overshadow your people 
as they stand right now in the need of prayer. We shall not sin against you by not praying for the needs. Lord, I bring Lois to you today, Father. She stands in need of healing. Father, I speak healing from the top of her head to the very crowns of her feet inside and out. I thank you, Lord God, right now that your healing virtue is not, see, it's not stuck here with me. I am not the healer. You are. I declare my words go where Lois is right now. And I declare by faith that you are touching her. I declare by faith and agreement with others that you are healing everything that needs to be healed in her. I declare by faith, Lord God, that even her digestive system it's something with a digestive system, Lord God, that you would regulate that right now by way of the spirit. I declare by faith, Lord God, I feel the heat overshadowing her right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare, Lord God, complete healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. You are in control. There is nothing that you are caught off guard about. And so, Father, we thank you for everyone that needs to heal. Father, I say thank you. 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 Father, I say thank you. Lord, let release your glory over your people. I speak healing. I speak strength to bones right now in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes when you're going through treatments, that's what I hear in the spirit. Sometimes when you're going through different treatment, it can affect your bones. But I declare a re regeneration of the strength and the capacity of your bones in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Father, I thank you. I thank you right now, Lord God, for healing bodies. Lord, we are asking you and trusting you. This is a season of oppressing in on our faith. See, sometimes we hear it. We've heard people say that, uh, <laughs> yes, daughter, I hear people say all the time, you know, I believe God is a healer, but then when they face with something, they doubt. Today, I want to come and, and ask the Lord right now to reignite your trust in him. I don't care if you prayed about a thing and it ain't moved yet. God still is God. And we come now and believe by faith that whatever healing you stand in need of, God is going to release into you. Father, I say thank you. We still trust that he's sovereign. He may not do it in your time. He may not do it in my time, but he going to do it. He going to do it. So Father, we thank you for the release of healing over this broadcast. And I just am bold enough to say whether it's the live or the replay. It's somebody, there's two people I see that's going to watch the replay. One is having a problem with their foot. And I declare in the name of Jesus that even as you watch, you're going to begin to feel a tingling in your left foot and God is going to heal it because it's just been this stiffness and it hurts to stand on it. But I declare by way of the Holy Ghost that you're going to be able to, to, to have that flexibility back in your foot. And the other person, there's a problem kind of on this, on this right side of of your back area. I don't know if you strained it or whatever, but I declare by way of the Holy Spirit that God is releasing the healing for you. Father, we thank you that you are a healing God. I thank you right now for healing some emotions. There's some emotional trauma that some of you have been going through. And I declare by way of the Holy Spirit that God is going to bring the healing for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Lord, we thank you. Again, we will not sin against you by not praying for your people. I remember um, last month as I was praying, there was a man that jumped on my live and said, I'm sick and tired of you Christians. What y'all praying for? God ain't fixed nothing yet. I didn't cut him off. I didn't get rid of him. But guess what? I understand your lack of understanding if you have not stopped and, and called upon him. If you have not stopped and trusted what he's done, then I can understand your doubt in who he is. But see, I cannot doubt him. Why? Because I've watched him too many times bring what I need in my life. I've watched him too many times fix some stuff that was unfixable in my own power. I've too many times watched him heal me when some places... 
that should not, I should still have been broken. I, I remember, just give by way of testimony, I remember I was in such a broken place and my heart was broken and ooh, yeah, that I saw. And I was like, Lord, is this pain gonna ever end? And I remember laying on the floor before the Lord, and I heard the Lord said, Jewel, I'm getting ready to do heart surgery on you. I felt like my chest was split open and my old heart was taken out and God put in a new heart. And I promised you for a month. I had a pain down the middle, uh, like an itching. You know, when you when you people that have had surgery understand when it start to heal, you get the itching. And I said, Lord, why is this itching here? He said, I'm leaving the itch there to remind you that I've given you a new heart because I don't want it to be reinfected with what things I've already healed you from. See, but when I got up off that floor, I promise you everything that had hurt me no longer hurt me. Everything that had wounded me no longer was wounding me. Mm. Everything, I mean, he did not leave anything. He gave me a new heart. And I just come to tell you today, I'm not talking about a God that somebody told me about. I'm not talking about a God that I'm watching on the sidelines from. I'm talking about the God that I've seen, experienced. I remember saying, Lord God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I said, Lord, I want a greater anointing. I want to be closer to you. And I remember the Lord said, you will meet me at the wall. I went over to the wall where I was at. And soon as I got to the wall, I just remember hitting the floor. What I thought took five or 10 minutes, I realized it was 45 minutes later. And in that encounter with God, I saw Jesus, but he wasn't Jesus like you see in these pictures. He wasn't, he was fire. His whole body was fire. I met the Jesus that's fire. His body was fire. His eyes was fire. Everything about him was fire. And he began to take me through deliverance. He began to pull things out of me. Things from old, things from current. And I know that I, so I'm not talking to you about a God that somebody else has experienced. I'm talking to you about the glory of God that I've experienced for myself. I'm talking to you about the fire of God, the glory of God that I have had encounter with. I'm talking to you from experience. So I don't care what nobody say when they say, why y'all Christians praying God ain't doing nothing? I don't know about nobody else, but I see God moving every day. When I woke up and breathe, I woke up this morning. I didn't wake up by myself. When I breathe, he's here. I can see he's here. Whatever I have, it's because he is here. So I thank you, Lord God. I don't know why I went there, but I think God just wants somebody to know. Don't think that what you asking for is impossible. Ask for the impossible. Expect the unexpected. Stand boldly and say, Lord, I need a healing. I tell you, I was supposed to have surgery on this hand. I couldn't hold nothing. I couldn't move nothing. They said, you got to have surgery. I went to the Lord and said, no, actually it was my left hand. I have to remember which hand it was because I write with my left hand. I said, Lord, I can't write. You told me you want me to produce. You told me you want me to do. I don't want to have surgery. I, 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 I don't want to have the surgery. But Lord, because then they can't guarantee they can fix what they said is broken. I said, but Lord, what do I do? I was scheduled for the surgery. He said, Jewel, who are you going to church? Trust me or the surgeon. I said, I trust you. He said, cancel the surgery. I canceled the surgery. I still had to wear my brace for a while, but I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And all I know was one day I just began to feel the heat as I was praying in my church. I was praying for somebody else. I began to feel like my whole left hand and my arm was on fire. It began to burn. Yep. Yep. You remember the brace. It began to burn. I mean, it felt like it was literally on fire. And I just began to do this because it was almost like, and I realized I hadn't been able to do that before. And I was like, come on, Holy Ghost. I haven't worn that brace since. I haven't had a problem with my hands since. Come on. I want you to understand. I'm not special. 
I am a child of God just like you. If he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. So, Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I come right now and I pray for Pam's friend, Alvin, who is having asthma attacks really bad. Father, we pray for his lungs in the name of Jesus. We're asking you to regenerate. We're asking you to create a new lung, Father. Bring about the ability, Father, for him to be able to breathe without a problem, without medicine. We believe by faith that you are still a God that can regenerate. Father, so we say thank you. We speak healing. We speak wholeness over him. And when you heal him, let him know that it was you. Use it to draw him to you you. Use it to bring him to an understanding that God is still God and God loves him. Father, I bring Virginia to you. Father, she has says um, she's got uh, lower body knee, uh, pains in her knees and feet um, and praying for her mobility because she says she can't walk. But Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for Virginia. We pray, Lord God, that you would break off whatever is keeping her bound in her seat. We speak to her legs. We speak to her knees. We speak to the spirit of infirmity and curse it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Also, I just hear this, so I got to say what the Lord said. Sometimes we got to forgive some stuff. I don't know if it's some people you got to forgive. I don't know if it's you might even got to forgive yourself because you need to be able to forgive so that nothing stands in the way of you being able to receive the fullness of the blessing that God has for you. And so, Father, we thank you that as she forgives, as she releases, Lord God, I see that as you release Virginia, I see the Lord saying that he will begin to do the work. So, Father, thank you right now. Break off anything that the enemy is trying to keep her in bondage to. We speak power. We speak strength to her limbs. We speak strength to her spine. We speak strength to every part of her body. May the glory of God hit her in a fresh way. Lord, let the fire let the fire be released over her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, even if it's a baby step, Lord, let her begin to see you regenerating and putting strength back into her body. Father, we come right now in an agreement. We all come in agreement for Virginia is healing. We come in agreement, Lord God, let her be a testimony of the fact that you are calling people out of wheelchairs, that you are calling people back to the place where they can walk, they can be healed. We're calling her back, Lord God, to restoration in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise about that. We give you praise. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for that. We just say thank you. Thank you. Healing for emotional situations right now. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you, Leslie. Leslie said that I said somebody was going to come on about their feet. I forgot. That's right. I said something about the feet. God said somebody is going to heal. And so you weren't on at first, Virginia, I don't believe. So I just believe by faith that God was talking to you. So you got to follow the protocols. I just believe sometimes, uh, 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 and I'm not blaming, so please don't hear, I'm not blaming you for not receiving healing, but we got to make sure we go before the Lord and say, Lord, if am I not, I don't want to hold nothing because we hold some things. Sometimes we can hold belief system. We can hold that this is all I'm going to be. So even if part of what, needs to be broken is your belief system about yourself, then I break that off for you in the name of Jesus. I break off the mindset that you're crippled. I break off the mindset that you can't walk. I break it off for you and declare by faith that you will begin to believe that if God says you can walk, you will walk. That you're going to believe that God can heal. You're going to believe and receive by faith and your faith be increased. I pray your faith be increased that God began to do the work in you. And so Sometimes God does it immediately and sometimes he does it in process because when he healed my hand, it wasn't immediately, but the suddenly did come. And so I just declare over you that God's purpose and plan be fulfilled in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My last scripture, 2 Samuel 7, who it at about 18 through 19. Now, this is David's prayer of thanksgiving. It says, then King David went in and sat before the Lord and prayed, who am I, O sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? 
And now, Sovereign Lord, in addition to everything else, you speak of giving your servant a lasting dynasty. Do you deal with everyone this way? Oh, Sovereign Lord. Now, this was his prayer. I'm going to go to 25. And, and, and I want you to hear this too. He said his prayer was this. And now, oh, Lord God, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. Confirm it as a promise that will last forever and may your name be honored forever so that everyone will say the Lord of heaven's army is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant David continue before you forever. I come by way of the Holy Spirit to remind somebody today we got to be like David. David said, wait a minute, who am I that you even that mindful of me? Who am I that you even think about me? Who am I, O sovereign Lord, that not only did you do what you've already done, you've brought me this far, but you are speaking over me that this servant of yours is going to have a lasting dynasty, lasting dynasty. That's called legacy. I declare over you today that you are going to be legacy builders in the name of Jehovah. You're going to build legacy. What God is doing in you does not stop with you. What you are building today is for the next generation and the next generation and the next generation if the Lord tarries in his coming. I just declare that over you. So our prayer today is like David. And now, oh Lord God, your servants, do as you have promised concerning us and our family. Confirm every promise that it will last forever. And may your name be honored in every way because you are, you are, you are the Lord of heaven's army and the God over all of your people and our house, your house, call your house, the house of Williams. Thank you, Jesus. The house, put your name in the house of Taylor, uh -huh, the top house of Pernell, the house of Anun, the house of Jacobs, the house of coffee. What is your name? Put it in your house and my house shall continue before you forever. Lord God, I thank you today that we are legacy building. You are providing for us not only the right partnership, go back to that first scripture I gave. God, help us to today. Our mission will not be aborted. Why? Because you're going to partner us with the right people so that we can make sure that the covenant that's needed for us is going to bring about the results that you want in our lives. And then, Lord God, we're not going to sin against you. We're going to pray for one another another. See, I'm going to pray for Darla. She going to pray for me. I'm going to pray for Marcy. She going to pray for me. I'm going to pray for Brenna. She going to pray for me. As the children of God, we are not enemies and we're no longer going to let the enemy convince us that we are one another's haters. We ain't hating on our brothers and sisters. We are loving them because we know to do otherwise is a sin before God. So we're going to pray for our brothers and sisters. We're going to trust that the Lord is going to do above and beyond what we can even pray and and while we are yet praying, we know that he is already working. So, Father, we thank you today that you are an awesome father. You are a loving father. And I thank you, Father, that you are confirming. I thank you today. Give some confirmation. I declare confirmations is coming to you. I declare confirmation is coming to you. There's some strategies and some plans that you've been hoping for and wanting. And I declare that some confirmations is going to come for you. And with those confirmations, God is going to let you know that this is a lasting confirmation. He ain't wishy-washy. It's a lasting confirmation. I declare a confirmation is coming to you, uh, Pastor Gamble. There's some confirmation that God is going to send and release over you as far as your, your congregation, as far as some things that you've been asking the Lord about and some things that you've been trying to um, determine, especially when we come to the other side of this pandemic, you've been in a place of, of contemplation and, and really at seeking God sincerely about some things that, that to do and how to, um, move forward in this next season. And God is going to begin to confirm it by way of his spirit. He's going to send people that is going to also bring this confirmation. And so I just declare over you, Pastor Gamble, that the Lord will begin to send right partnerships with you and your church as he builds and grows in you. Because I hear the Lord says, many may have thought that you were at the end of your season, but God said, ah, not so. He's opening new doors. There's a new season for you, Pastor Gamble, that is even greater than past 
seasons. He said, I'm not finished making your name great. I hear the Lord say that I'm going to continue to do above and beyond what you can ask and or think. He said, because there's some young men and women that need you to pour into them. There's some young men and young women that need you to help them see what it means to be a godly uh, a person, how to be godly before the Lord, how to live holy. Uh, and so I hear the Lord say, you are not outdated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. He said, you are not outdated. He said, you've got the right kind of love. You've got the right wisdom and you have the right heart, Pastor Gamble. He says, your heart is one that's this yielded to him and because it's yielded to him he's going to even do greater things I, I there's some things even from past um years that have not come to pass yet and sometimes we feel like well maybe i just wasn't supposed to do that god said it wasn't for then it's for now and so he said i am a promise keeper and so confirmation is that you are going to do those things that you've been asking the lord about he's going to bring them about he's going to bring the, the things you need and you're going to be able to see you walk in that purpose father thank you if you have a prayer request this is the time to start putting it and i'm just going to start going um in our last part of of this uh, of this time so father i bring your people to you and i say father seal these prayers and this word in our heart so that we can know that our mission will be accomplished what you have said to us it will happen and so i speak encouragement over your people because oftentimes the enemy of our soul wants to discourage us he wants us to look at what we see and not in what we know so i declare lord god we're stepping into the season and the time where we're going to stop looking we got blinders on we're going to stop looking around we're going to look up and we're going to trust you so father i bring keisha to you right now in the name of jesus father i thank you for everything concerning keisha father i pray for keisha's success i pray for keisha's life i pray for keisha's finances i pray for everything concerning keisha I bring her to you in the, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, and I declare an opening for her. That's the word I hear for you, opening. Open the things for Keisha that need to be open. Unlock the things in Keisha that need to be unlocked. I thank you right now, Lord God, as you unlock some things for her. I thank you, Father, that you're positioning her to walk through. Because, you know, once doors are unlocked, then you have access. So, Father, I thank you for the access that you have Um in, in her. I thank you for the access, Lord, of what you are doing for her and through her. And Father, I thank you for confidence building in Keisha right now. I thank you, Lord, that as you build the confidence in her, Lord God, that she's going to begin to see even greater. I thank you, Father, for even the, the continued working and blessing you're doing in her, even as it relates to just her identity. So we say thank you. Father, I pray for the a Shogo family. I'm uh, sorry if I messed that up, Leslie. Uh, Father, I pray for that entire family and I thank you right now, Lord, that you are touching them. I thank you, Lord God, that you are providing what they need. I speak provisions over families in general. Father, I thank you, Father, for healing. I thank you for touching. I thank you for strength right now, Lord. Everything that they stand in need of, Father, we thank you for providing it for them. Father, give them comfort right now in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes, Lord God, I just, you know, I I feel, I feel stressed. So Father, I thank you right now for relieving their stress and helping them to see that you are with them. Thank you for helping them to see and understand that they are not alone. Father, that you are with them, walking with them. And so we give you praise right now. Father, I bring Sapphire to you, Lord God. Give her the courage that as she comes on um, tonight with the, the, the prayer show that she's doing with uh, Prophetess Michelle, Lord God, help her to be confident that you are with her, that this is just the next step in the mini door that you are opening for her. I've been telling her over and over again, I see fire. So Father, thank you for the fire that you're going to release in her. Let her flow in that without any reservations. I speak no reservations over you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bring you the Carter's family and the Power and Light Church family, as they grieve the loss of a one of their prayer warriors, Father, I bring that 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 congregation and those people to you, and I pray, Lord, that you would help them right now, because many are in times where stuff just don't make sense. It's hard, and they don't understand it. But Father, I thank you for the the revelation you gave me. When those that die in Christ leave 
they we have not lost them you have just received them so father i thank you for receiving that warrior that has come to be with you but for those that are left behind give them comfort comfort of their hearts lord help us the others to remember to lift them in prayer and to keep them encouraged in prayer and strength so father we give you praise for that congregation and for any other congregation that has has loved ones that have gone on and be whether it be from sickness COVID, or anything else anytime there's a we we have a loved one die it is difficult and so father we thank you that you are with us and keeping us i'm praying for joshua uh uh for pam's son joshua and his family lord we thank you right now for touching them we thank you lord for all the things that you're doing as it relates to that family father we're thanking you for just drawing them to you even his name joshua lord god let him be one that leads let him lead his family to you let him lead his family to the right direction so that they can continue to see who you are and know who you are and so father we just thank you right now that as you even give visitation to Joshua and his family for their next because you have a destiny and a, a plan and a future for them, Lord. So we thank you for that. Father, I pray for, for Marcy's, um, Lord God, she said for her arrogant and prideful children, Lord God, we ask you to break off arrogance, break off pride, help us, Lord God, to be able to stand in the right place, in the right relationship with you so that we can know that we know and we can, we can do what we've called to do. So Father, I pray right now that you would break that pride off of them, Lord. First, let them humble themselves because Lord, when you break it off of us, it's a hard thing to do. Uh, so Lord, we thank you that you will touch them and, and bring them to you, Father. But we pray for all of our children, Lord, any of our children that are in a backslidden state that are refusing to submit to you, we come right now and ask you to draw our children, our family, our loved ones to you, bring them to the place of submission where they submitting themselves to you so that they can walk in who you've called for them to be. Lord, I pray for Jacqueline right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you know every need, you know every desire. And Father, I thank you. Not only do you feel the needs, but God, I thank you that you even give us some of our wants. So Father, right now, I pray that you would help her release to her the things that she stands in need of. Give her encouragement and remind her that she is not alone. Remind her today, Lord, that everything about her is important to you. I, I hear the Lord say for you, Jacqueline, he just wants you to know everything, not some stuff, everything about you is important to him. So Father, I thank you right now as you continue to show her and heal her and, and, and direct her and help her to see her purpose in you and who you have called for her to be. So Father, we say thank you right now for all that you're doing. We give you praise. We're like King David when he says, who am I, Father? Why are you even mindful of us? But you are because you have called us to be your people and we want to walk as you have called for us to walk. And so we just give you praise. And I just want to remind us, thank you, Jesus. Your mission that God gave you will find success. Why? Because God is invested in you fulfilling the plan that he has for your life. God is investing in you. He's sending right relationships. So we have to say, Lord, confirm for me. Show me those right relationships so I am aligned to what you want me to do. And not only is he sending right relationships, but he is sending his, your other brothers and sisters to pray for you. Even when you find yourself in some difficult places. And then lastly, this scripture with David, when David wanted to build the temple, God is saying, I got a plan for your life. Your, my plan isn't just for you, but my plan is even for your seed to come and for those that are coming after you. So I, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you today um, for joining me. And my one little, my one little uh, advertisement is if you haven't got my book, Broken China Makes a Beautiful Mosaic, I would ask that you would please be so kind as to uh, get a copy of my book. And, you know, it's not just for the married woman. It's for any woman that uh, 
wants to be able to see how to deal with some of those emotional things that we deal with in this walk. And so um, it, it, I know many of you have already gotten it. And so I appreciate it and say thank you. Um, but I just want to remind us today again before I say goodbye. And that is God's got a plan for you and he has not aborted the mission. And I am expecting to hear some testimonies of some healings. I'm expecting to hear some testimonies of where God has changed some stuff. I am, I am here. I am expecting to hear some changes. Thank you, Pamela. Pamela said you guys need to get the book. It's good. So I, I'm expecting to hear some changes because of who God is and what he is doing in our lives. And you can get the book at publishthevision.com in my bookstore. And it's only $16.99, so it's not as super expensive, but I believe it can be a game changer for you, a life changer, just to help us in the things that we do. So you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. And anybody that came in late, you can watch the replay as soon as I finish. But my prayers are not just for those that are on, but I pray again, somebody's going to come, even if it's the replay, and God has a blessing for you and a reminder that God is going to see your mission fulfilled. So you guys have a great rest of the day. God bless.